Today I have a Lightroom tip for you. Create better vignettes using the Radio Gradient Plus, the Luminance Range Mask. This is a great tip, so stay tuned. Hello everyone and welcome to the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I want to show you a really great Lightroom tip and I think you're going to really love it. And you might be asking yourself right now, hey Dave, you're in Photoshop, not Lightroom. Yeah, I know, but I want to show you a technique that I use in Photoshop. And for all of you out there that watch my TK Friday videos every Friday, where I'm using the TK8 plugin for Photoshop, you know I always do this uh, vignette on my images. I do freehand vignettes or just traditional vignettes. And the way I do that, I come into my TK actions and I go to either freehand vignette or vignette. I'll add a vignette and I already have one added here, but I've come up with a way where I can add blend if to make my vignettes look better. And basically what blend if is doing, and I'll open up blend if so you can see it. If you'll notice, I'm protecting my deepest shadows because on vignettes, when you have a nice vignette going around the edges, your shadows a lot of times get really dark and blocked up, and that doesn't look very attractive. So what I do is with Blend If is I protect the shadow areas, all right? And that's what I've done here. So I'll show you. Here's the before the vignette, and here's the after. It's a very natural-looking vignette, but it's not making my shadows go too dark, which is very, very important. And some of you out there don't use Photoshop, you just use Lightroom, or you may use Photoshop and you forgot to add a vignette. Well, when you're in Lightroom, you don't have to come back into Photoshop. You can just go ahead in Lightroom and add a vignette. But I'm going to show you how to get this same shadow protection. So let me show you that now. Here we are in Lightroom. I'm using a stock image today. I picked this image because it's a typical landscape type image. And this technique works really well in landscapes or really any type of an image for that matter. Well, let me show you how I do this. Now, I highly recommend that when you're doing this, that you go to a smaller size. Okay, right now I'm fitting the screen here, but I'm going to go down to like 50% because I'm going to give myself some room here because I'm not going to be using the uh, traditional vignette found in Lightroom, I'll be using the new masking tools found in Lightroom. And what we'll be using is the radio gradient. So I'm clicking on the radio gradient. And I'm using Lightroom Classic for this. And this is uh, the 11.2 release, just in case you're wondering. And this is not hard to do. What we're going to do is just draw a gradient. So I'm going to click in the center and just draw myself out a nice gradient, a radial gradient. And then you could come here and you can adjust it around. Like you can adjust how height graduates out like this, pull it around and make sure you get it adjusted just the way you want it. And you can tailor it for each and every image, but I'll also show you how you can save this as a preset after I show you the initial way of doing this, okay? But let's say we're pretty happy with that. I may make this a little bit bigger and right here, this a little bit bigger like that. I think that's going to be pretty good. And you can always come back and readjust it later. If you hover over this center circle here, you can see the actual gradient. Now it's doing the opposite of what I want, so I need to invert it. So all you need to do is come over to radial gradient and click this ellipse and click invert. And now you'll see it's doing exactly what I want it to do. And it looks really good. So the black area is being protected. This is basically a mask, just like you see in Photoshop. And it's really exciting since masking was brought into Lightroom. It makes it a much more powerful editing solution. Now, how are we going to protect the dark areas like, like these areas here on the trees and up in here? We want to protect those. So how can we do it? Well, all you need to do is come back over here and make sure radial gradient one is selected and see where it says subtract, click subtract and click luminance range that's the first step and stay with me because i'm going to show you how to make this into a preset so you won't have to do this all the time you'll just click on your preset and then you can just tweak it a little bit if needed and now if i hover over mask one we can see that's our radial gradient right there and by the way you're seeing mine is black and white you can change that by coming to show overlay click right here i'm showing it as white on black but you have different options you can do color overlay but i do like the white on black so yours may look different depending on how that show overlay is set up. Now, right now I have the new luminance range active. And if I hover over the image, see this eyedropper tool here? All you need to do is find a really dark area that you want to protect. Like for me, it's going to be right here. I'm going to click on that. And you can see 
all the areas in white are going to be protected. Now we can adjust that and I'll show you how. Now I have not applied a vignette to it yet. We're getting there, but notice something here. Let's come up to mask one again and hover over it. You see all the black areas right now in the mask. They will not be affected, okay? They'll be protected. That's very important. Now, when I hover over the luminance range, you're seeing the opposite effect. They look white here, but on the mask, they look black, and that means they're being protected. So the lighter areas, the gray areas, the light areas, they're going to get the vignette. And remember, I subtracted the luminance range from the mask, and that's why it's opposite. It could be kind of confusing, but it's hard to explain. But we're telling that mask not to apply the effect to those dark shadow tones that we have subtracted. Now, let's focus our attention to this luminance range section right here, okay? And you'll notice some things have changed here. These are the dark tones that we're protecting, and they're kind of graduating off this way, okay? Now, if you check on show luminance map right here, in red overlay, you can see the areas that are being protected in red. Now, you can adjust this, right? Watch this if I take this feathering and feather this out. See how it's feathering more areas into it? Or I could bring it this way and tighten it up. Or I can take this and move it over, but I want to protect those dark tones. But you can adjust here. You can pull this in if you want to and get less of the dark tones or whatever you want. But you can tweak it here. And just remember, the red areas basically are the areas that you are protecting. And I think we're really good right here. Now let's shut off the show luminance map by unchecking this. Now we haven't made an adjustment yet. So now let's come down to the adjustments here. And we have all these adjustments in here, but I'm mainly going to be concerned with exposure. So I'm going to take the exposure and start to drag it to the left. And you see I'm adding a vignette, right? And I'll go a little strong so you can really see it. Let's go really strong. And now let's come back up here and let's come to luminance range. See the little eyeball here. Let's shut this off. This is what the mask looks like without that protection. And this is what it looks like with the protection. It's a much better vignette. Now it's too strong. And then I could shut off the overall effect if I come up to mask one here and then just click this eye. There's before and there's after. And you can hover over mask one and you can see, again, the center is protected and the areas in the vignette that are dark or black they're not getting the effect, okay? So again, let's come to luminance range and shut off the protection, and now we're turning it on. Now, we can come back down here to exposure, and that's too much, so I'm gonna like just back it off a little bit, maybe right around there, and now let's take a look. Here is before, and here is after, but look how nice and natural that is. And next, after you've done all that work, you don't want to keep doing that all over again, right? So you want to save yourself out of preset. And now anytime you work in another image, that preset will get you, you know, like 80% of the way there. You'll just have to do some tweaking. You might have to adjust the radial gradient a little bit, and you might have to tweak the luminance range. But no big deal, right? Now, a lot of you know how to save presets, but it's really easy to do. All you have to do is come to the left side of Lightroom and find presets. It's up at the top of the list here. And see the little plus here? Click on plus. Click on create preset. Give that preset a name like uh, vignette. I've already made one, but say vignette with shadow protection or something like that. And then you see where it says group. This is a drop down. Right now it says user presets. I put mine in user presets, but if you click this drop down, you have all these different, you know, depending how many preset groups and things you have. You can put them in anything you want. See, I have one here called vignettes, but I just put mine in user presets. So I clicked on user presets. Now this is important. If you see a bunch of things checked off here, I usually like to start out by saying check none, click on check none. And all we're interested in is masking. When you click on masking, masking gets checked and mask one gets checked. And then just click create and you've made a preset. But as I said, I've already made mine. So I'm just going to click cancel. But if you look over at my presets, you see I have radial vignette shadow protection and that's my preset name now to recap don't forget my little tip at the beginning make your screen not fit but you know reduce it down in size that way you have more room to work with your radial gradient when you're making the initial preset okay so now that our preset is made let's try this out on another image now here's another stock image and let's try out our preset. Now you'll notice this one's going in portrait mode rather than landscape mode like the last image, but it doesn't matter. The preset will automatically adjust for whatever mode you're in, landscape or portrait. And I've also reset myself back to fit screen. 
And now you'll notice if I hover over radio vignette shadow protection, my preset, you can see there's my vignette right on there, right? So let me click this and apply it. And you'll notice if I click on the masking icon here, there it is. Okay, so if I click on here, you can see there's my luminance range, there's my radio gradient. And if I hover over here, you can see the areas in black or the darker toned areas are becoming protected. Like up at the top, here, this cloud is being protected. These areas over here, down in the water here, I believe is being protected a little bit. So there you go. And if you need to retweak anything, and in my case, I got lucky because I'll tell you what, this looks really good. If I shut the overall vignette off, there's a before and there's the after. So we're looking really good. But if you need to adjust your luminance range, click on luminance range and your luminance range pops up. And don't forget, you can show luminance map. And then you can readjust this if you need to. Or you could click on your radio filter and readjust the size. Just that simple. You can retweak the amount of exposure. Whatever you want. And it's just that simple. And then you can close this out when you're done. And there is your vignette. And now in Lightroom, you have a way to protect your shadow tones, which is very important because the original uh, Lightroom vignette tool gave you highlight priority and color priority, but it didn't give you shadow protection, which to me is the most important thing to protect. Well, there it is, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this Lightroom tip on how to create a better vignette using the Radio Gradient Plus Luminance Range Mask. I hope you get a lot of mileage out of this. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe and click that bell notification icon. Then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. Well, I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.